welcome to Sense and Nonsense A to Z, where we pick topics based off of the letter of the day. Today is episode 17 of season two, featuring the letter Q. We're family and we're your hosts, A, T, and Z. So let's get started. Hey, K Pasa. K Pasa. Hey, the heck with trying to invent a Q. <laughs> Hello, because it doesn't exist. I've no. tried. Kipasa is good. Kipasa is great. I love that. I, I like it too. Plus, you know, people do use that to greet each other. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey. so Kipasa. Kipasa. Yeah. Guess what happened? What? I got a phone call, right? Okay. And uh, I, was, I was doing some work. I was traveling and I got a phone call. Hi, this is 107.1 The Boss. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Because I do football pools, you know, I mean, yeah. all kinds of stuff, right? And I know I'm doing pretty good in this particular football pool. The the one that you just pick one, I died a long time ago on that one. But <laughs> this one, you know, this one is one that you pick every team, you know, and um, whoever has the most gets a prize and that sort of thing. So anyway, I won tickets to Elvis Costello. <gasps> no way! Way! That's way. awesome! Yeah, Atlantic City. Awesome. Are you going to go? I am. Awesome. I am. I've, I've already scoped him. it out. Yeah. I've seen him. He's fantastic. He's fantastic. I love Elvis. I Costello. know. Me too. Yeah. He's really good live. I can imagine. Oh my God. I saw him in this little theater. I can't remember where, but it was like a theater theater. In New Jersey and, or in North mm, Carolina? No, I think, it, but it, I think it was PA maybe. So yeah. it was when you were living here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And he was, he was so good. He was singing without a microphone. And oh, it was cool. Awesome. I mean, oh, so it was a, a, lot of, a smaller theater. It wasn't like it was MSG or anything. No, like no, no, that. no. It yeah. was a theater. I mean, yeah. it was a pretty big theater, but yeah. still, I mean, he, most of the show he sang with a microphone, but he mm -hmm. did like two songs without a microphone, like acapella. It was yeah. so fantastic. He's so good. He's so good. Yeah. yeah. I hope you have a good time. Oh, I will. Yeah. I will. No doubt. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I know his stuff, you know? So good. Anything going on with you? Got book club this week. So oh, yeah. I'm, that came up fast, huh? I know. It did. So I'm scrambling did, did to read, read the book. Oh, okay. How far did you get? Uh, I'm not very far yet. Oh, okay. So we'll, <laughs> we'll get going on this so you can start yeah, reading, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay. And I, I was actually mapping it out today because I was looking. I'm like, ooh, recording. And ooh, got to read the book. Oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll get going. Yeah. <laughs> So I want to start off with some sports stuff. First, I wanted to congratulate the New York Giants for clinching a playoff spot. So it's important. Way to go, Giants. Yes, and congratulations. Of course, and of course, the Jets didn't make it. They've got enough problems with quarterbacks, so they don't have a clue. <laughs> oh, jeez. But the biggest news was last Monday night's game. Mm -hmm. Buffalo Bills versus the Cincinnati Bengals. DeMar Hamlin. Oh, he, man. This whole thing has broken my heart. Well, he's doing good now. He's doing fantastic. Yes. Here. Yeah. 24 year old safety. He collapsed on the field from cardiac arrest after tackling a Bengals receiver. Yeah. And after the tackle, and I'm sure you've seen this video, right? He, he got, got up, up and then he, he was ready to play again. Yeah. And then he collapsed backwards and it uh, was like, oh my God. You know, it's really the doctor said that it was quick thinking on the, what are they, they're the medical team? Is that yeah. what they're called? Yeah. They, they kept, him alive i mean he would have had a lot of neurological damage if they hadn't uh, swooped right in there knowing that there know. was something wrong yep, you know exactly. so he owes a lot to that medical team absolutely Ooh. and um i mean it was played in front of yeah you know, played America. out they they gave him cpr for like 10 minutes right 10 minutes and then yeah. they gave him cpr again when he got to the hospital yeah he was in so, bad shape he was in bad shape he's lucky he really to be alive he, oh, thank, thank god he's I, know. Okay. I know i mean he's getting there did you hear about the first thing he did when he woke up he asked if they won isn't that awesome i mean talk about he had a, a, good he had a tube down he had, he yeah. wrote it out did we yeah. win <laughs> yeah it's like oh no god. silly they canceled it no they're <laughs> not gonna keep going you were dead but yeah you were dead. <laughs> yeah so in the meantime he had a toy drive charity in his hometown of uh, McKee's Rocks, PA. His GoFundMe page, the goal was $2,500. To date, 
it's almost seven million. Oh my god, that's that, awesome! It's unbelievable. That's awesome. You know, we were talking. I was talking about this with my mom. Him in conjunction with Jeremy Renner, they both are making remarkable recoveries for Thank what god. happened to them. Thank god. Thank god. But you know, these two gents have the world behind them right now one oh, yeah because of sports and the other sure. one because he's a marvel hero but <laughs> you know True. but but i mean that's a big deal because you're known throughout the world and so people's hearts and energy are with you and that's gotta help that's gotta help absolutely you know you recover that's gotta give you more momentum than you would normally have sure. because both of these guys are doing way better than they quote unquote should be doing right so i gotta feel that all these prayers all these people's energy right. all this goodwill right is helping them yep. heal yep i agree with you mm -hmm. Okay, what do we want to do now? How about if we do 10 questions? All right. Okay. Now, I got a little twist here. Rather than trying to figure out Q questions, how about if you give me what your personal feeling is on these stories by telling me whether it's quite right okay. or quite wrong? Okay. All right. So these are all stories that have been in the news recently. All right. I know what you're going to say about the first one, but Foo Fighters. They put out a statement on Instagram that pretty much 2022 is the most difficult year of their lives, but they're going forward. It's going to be a different band. Quite right. I agree, 100%, mm -hmm. quite mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm with them on that. Okay, number two, diabetic drugs. There is a shortage of diabetic drugs due to them being proven to have weight loss. And Ozempic is one of the injectable drugs. And so people who are diabetic are having a hard time getting it because people who are using this for weight loss are hogging it up, you know? Yep. And uh, drug makers believe that they will have FDA approval in 2023 for it to be considered a weight loss drug. So what's your, what's your feeling on this? Whole well, thing? since the beginning, people have been finding things work for other stuff yeah, you know? yeah. and so that's quite right but yeah. it's quite wrong <laughs> that these poor souls who need it to live because they're diabetic <laughs> exactly. uh, that's quite wrong yeah. you know? You know? but uh, again the demand is there so is. the drug, drug makers come on get on board and yes. start making more of this stuff obviously uh, there's a greater demand than they had originally considered supply and demand absolutely boosts up the price we are a capitalist economy uh, are, i realize you know? that yep okay number three human composting Ooh. the state of new york has approved to compost human bodies so a person can now have their body turned into soil after death, which is seen as environmentally friendly. Really? <laughs> and an alternative to burial or cremation. So it's known as natural organic reduction. The process is that the body is shut into a container and over several weeks it decomposes. With, they probably put bugs in there, don't they? I don't know. Oh! The state of Washington was the first to adopt it in 2019, and then Colorado, Oregon, Vermont, and California followed. What's your what's your feeling on human composting? Okay, icky, but that's how we've got crude oil, isn't it? I mean, organic <laughs> material breaking down over time has oh, kind of happened. I mean, if you weren't ultra wealthy or important, that's what happened to you. Yeah. you know for thousands of years so yeah. the concept is icky but i guess you know it's quite right i quite guess right huh, for the time <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay sounds quite wrong but i guess yeah. it's quite right it is you know i mean we, we return to that state don't we and i guess it's you're better served with the cycle of life than just being put into right. ash and thrown somewhere sure. you know sure. okay number four avatar the way of water becomes the 10th highest grossing movie of all time. So it passed Top Gun Maverick and Furious 7. So let's see, Maverick 1.489 billion, Furious 7 1.515 billion, and so far Avatar 2 is 1.516. 
I guess quite right, right? Quite, I mean, quite right. It, it was pretty much guaranteed, considering yeah. how well the first one did. Mm -hmm. sure. And uh, that one broke records all over the place. So, yeah, yeah I guess it's quite right. Yeah. Okay, next one is Southwest Airlines Meltdown. So a mix of holiday traffic and winter weather. The drama began on December 21st, where 16,000 flights were canceled. And they're saying that they didn't have enough pilots, flight attendants, baggage handlers, de-icing trucks, and operators, et cetera, et cetera. Quite wrong. I uh, totally Quite agree. Quite wrong. The Quite reason wrong. that they- And we bailed them out. Oh yeah. You know? The reason that they're having a meltdown is because they have antiquated systems. Yes. Because every other airline had to contend with the same thing. Right. And they did not cancel thousands of flights across the nation, leaving people stranded, leaving a poor person to not get a heart transplant because of this debacle, leaving a poor person unable to get married because of this debacle. So no, quite wrong. I agree. Okay, next one. Edibles. Mm -hmm. Reports of young children accidentally eating marijuana edibles soar. Yeah. Edibles are often packaged to look like candy. Sure and of course, are. children have no idea. And, you know, they're pretty and they find them appealing, so they're eating them. Of course. Quite right. Because it's the parent's responsibility to keep edibles away from your kids. Well, quite wrong, you mean. Well, no, it's quite, the edibles should be good. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. As far nothing... as the edibles is a quite yeah. right thing. Right. It's quite as right. As... <laughs> edibles should be good. Edibles right. are there to serve a purpose. Yes. They're right. gum. Let me get into yeah. gummy. They're brownies or cookies or yeah. they're things that are supposed to be yummy. Yeah. You're supposed to keep these things away from your children. There exactly. should be, they are a drug. They it's should be like locked. A exactly. They're like yeah. a prescription drug. Yes. You don't say, oh, Tylenol shouldn't be Tylenol or Advil. Put, a, put them out in a bowl. Yeah. Oh, damn, Advil, too pretty. That blue just looks so nice. <laughs> yeah. You know, I want to eat it. No, yeah. you keep it elsewhere so right. that your youngsters don't get they into get it. it. Exactly. It's parents, uh, the adult's responsibility to keep I that agree. stuff away maybe, from Maybe, and you know what? Maybe they shouldn't make them into gummy bears. I, see, I don't even have a problem with that because no matter what they make them into, they're going to be food. Yeah. And kids are going to want to eat them. So that's not even the point. The point is don't keep them where your kids would normally yeah. find candy. Yeah. Right. Okay. We're up to number seven. A New Jersey man, 24 years old, was charged with two misdemeanors for leaving his dog behind outside of a Des Moines, Iowa airport. He was charged with animal abandonment and neglect. So apparently, and it was a cute, cute little pit bull, one year old, of which he bought a ticket for the dog, got to the airport, and the dog wasn't in a crate. And they said, you can't just take the dog on the plane. The dog needs to be in a crate. So apparently what this guy did is he took the dog outside the airport, tied it to a pole, boarded, went to Newark. You know, and it's like, this guy's only charged with two misdemeanors? So, quite wrong or quite right? I, I don't know. It's a life, you yeah. know? Yeah. You, you can't just, you've taken responsibility for this thing. Yeah. Uh, and then you've just and, abandoned and, it. And when they questioned him, he apparently had no other feeling to go back and get the dog. He, well, no, he really, if he was he really, okay with abandoning it, why yes. would he want to go back? Why, to why, get why the would he dog? go back and go get him? Yeah. But I think he, he should have made it some arrangement somehow for that dog. Like, obviously, I think so too. why go through the trouble of buying it a ticket and then just abandoning it? it that just seems weird to me. I'm I, guessing this guy was in a hurry. He wanted to get back to Newark, and that was it, you know? And it was like the dog was at, apparently in the way at this point. Rather than canceling his flight and trying to figure out what to do with the dog, he figured to just tie him up and leave him there. I don't know. Between the behavior and between the just giving him two misdemeanors, I'm going to say quite wrong. Yeah, the whole thing seems wrong. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, quite wrong. I, I gotta think so. Okay, we're up to number eight. Canada, as of January 1st, non-citizens are banned from buying homes in Canada. 
there's a two-year ban because of their housing market. It's become unaffordable and there's no houses out there. So uh, non-Canadian residents make up less than 6% of homeowners in Ontario and British Columbia. Oh, and there's some exceptions too, like if somebody has been there for five years, um, like an international student, there's an exception for somebody like that or somebody who has a temporary work permit. Um, but all in all, if you're not a citizen, you cannot buy a home right now in Canada. Quite wrong. And that's not going to solve anything. No, that that's ridiculous. If, if you're talking about you don't want income to leave, like rental, like if you don't you don't want somebody to use that property as a rental property as a source of income and you don't want that money leaving the country, mm -hmm. I, I can understand that. But just to ban you from buying it. So like if I was wealthy and I wanted to vacation in Canada and I wanted to continually vacation in the same spot in Canada, you would tell me that I couldn't buy a home there? I guess. For two years? Quite wrong. Quite wrong. Okay. All right, next one. A nun and a monk fell in love and got married. So in Northern England, Sister Mary Elizabeth, who was a nun for 24 years, apparently this friar, Robert of Oxford, <laughs> was there visiting the convent. After a dinner, she walked him out. She somehow brushed against his sleeve as she was helping him go out the door uh -huh. and she felt a jolt. <laughs> I just felt a chemistry there, she says. <laughs> and then about a week later, she received a letter from the monk stating, would you leave your order to marry me? Oh my God. Quite right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going right. to say, <laughs> I'm going to say that jolt that she felt had to be the electricity from somebody's wool jacket, right? <laughs> and the carpet, you know, rubbing against the carpet. <laughs> Maybe, maybe it was electric shock, but you know what? They're interpreting it as love. If it was strong enough for them to rethink their positions, then what the hell, right? Yeah. After yeah. 24 years, you can do whatever you want. I think if you don't want to be a thing for any more than 24 That's years, you fine. go up right ahead and, and, and do that. <laughs> Good for them. Okay, so my last one is resolutions. I had just heard that the average person gives up on their New Year's resolutions by January 31st. Mm -hmm. so um, it... I think that's quite wrong. <laughs> I think so too. But, you know, I think people, we, we're t we've been talking about resolutions. We've been yeah. talking about that. First of all, don't pick something so unrealistic for you. Second yes. of all... That's number one. That's number one. If it's not attainable, it's yeah, yeah it I shouldn't mean, be a goal. Yeah. No. Number two, motivation is something you have to continually do. Mm. It's not just like, oh, January 1st, I've said I was going to do this thing. And then I don't have to, you know, continually hype myself up to do it. I don't have to continually give myself pep talks or remind myself as to why I made that decision on January 1st in the first place. So try to do it for another 30 days yeah. and see what happens you know yeah i have one through ten here i'll do them real quick the resolutions exercise more came in number one mm -hmm. then goes eat healthier lose weight save more money spend more time with friends and family less social media mm -hmm. wow reduce job stress reduce living expenses Quit smoking was number nine, mm -hmm. and then cut back on alcohol is number 10. Okay, so here's the thing about all of these that I'm, I'm listening to. They're all very vague, right? Mm. Exercise more. What does that mean, more? So, yeah. extra, you know, exercise once more a week than I have been. You know, mm. one more session, 20 more minutes a week than I have been. Um, reduce stress. Again, how do you measure that? You have to make True. things quantifiable so that you know if you're doing well or not and you can mark your progress. Right. Say something like, oh, I'm going to meditate for 10 minutes three times a week and see where you get with that, you know, yeah. rather than just I'm going to reduce my stress. Yeah. But I think for survey purposes, you can't get that detailed. No, but it's indicative of how people do make resolutions. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely you know? right. And, yep. and part of the reasons why they quit after 30 yeah, days or yeah sure. because it's like well i can't really tell if it's helping me in the first place so, uh, so why forget gonna, it yeah <laughs> you know okay that was fun it was different right it was different 
<laughs> let's do a word game. Okay, let's get that done. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Q, 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 Q. I know, Q, right? My little <laughs> side game that I'm going to have going here is how many are the same? Funny that you said <laughs> that because I asked for six this time. Ooh, just just, nice just in case. Just in case. And I go first and I got to keep score and I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Granite. Quartz. Good. Yay. Yay. <laughs> That's a five. <laughs> okay. Okay. Blanket. Quilt. Yes. All right. Shoo. Are these going to be too easy because we're picking I don't know. obvious well, cues? Q, uh, well, hopefully they didn't go into like quintessential or something <laughs> like that. You know, it's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Okay. Um, answer. Question. All right. I guess it will be easy, but that's okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> Answer. Question. <laughs> that's one. Should I do another one? Yeah, do another one. Okay. I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Quiet. Yes. <laughs> no wonder I didn't hear it. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. How come I feel like we've done this before? Okay. Mexican. Queso. Quesadilla. There you go. <laughs> That's technically four. <laughs> that is four. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Saying. Quote. Yes. All right. Nice. 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 <laughs> All right. This might be a little tough. Limestone. Limestone. Quarry? Oh, <gasps> you got it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. 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 Okay. Good job. King. Queen. <laughs> you had to know that was going to come up. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I got a good one. Okay. Twins. Uh oh. <laughs> Quintuplets. Four. Quadruplets. Oh, you got it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that was that was it, right? Nine yeah. or so? Okay. Five, mm -hmm. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 43. <gasps> Yay! We're Yay! tied. We tied. Yay! 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 We did good. Yes. Okay, one word left to roll into our what do you think of segment? Okay. And the word is quarter. 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 Nickel. Quarter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Uh, quarterback. Mm, quarter horse. Good. Uh, quarter final. Quarter after. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. I'm going to hit all the sports ones then. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, right? Oh my God. Right? Quarter of. Quarter of. That's good. Uh, quarter inch hmm. quarter mile quarter pounder Ooh, oh one. quarterly oh good um quarter cup quarter cup okay four quarters okay um quartermaster oh that's good right military yeah. right right quartermaster yeah i really just this is not a great word for me okay 
The only word I can come up with before quarter. You know, I always try to do the word right. Right, is French Quarter. That's really French, good. French Quarter, right? Yeah, French Quarter, New Orleans. I'm just not, I don't know why. I'm just not finding that word in my head. Quarter panel. Drawn and quartered. There you go. We'll end it on that. <laughs> it's a tough word, right? It's really a hard word. I mean, probably not if I sat here and thought about it for a really long time, but. I Good thing know. we didn't end up with um, quartz or something. That would have been really bad. Yeah. Okay. We hope you liked that segment and remember to follow us on Facebook and leave us a comment keeping it about PG ish. Oh, I like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And let us know what you think when you think of quarter. I'd be really interested to know. Yeah. Hey, are we ready for Pineapple Corner? We are ready for Pineapple Uh, Corner. Okay. You know, this episode has my favorite title. Season three, episode two, murder, anyone, anyone, Bueller. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) I love it. And the question marks in between everything too. It's perfect. That is why we are doing this episode for Q because of the question marks. <laughs> because there's there is no, no Q. title with a Mm-mm. Q. Exactly. We looked, we checked, we double we checked. checked. It was nowhere to be found. So right. questions. Yeah. That actually ties in perfectly because all there are are basically questions in this episode. It is Gus and Sean's class reunion. Right. 13. And exactly. They're 13. <laughs> Right? right so they graduated in 1995 and they're having their 13th reunion because gus is in charge of these things <laughs> right and gus decided that instead of name tags everybody would wear their senior class picture as their <laughs> name tag <laughs> and sean of course can't go along no he has to buck the system <laughs> Part of the whole theme of this thing is the Breakfast Club. You saw the Breakfast yes. Club, right? Yes, okay. I have. Sure. Thank God. Because yeah. they also asked the question, who hasn't seen the Breakfast Club? I know, right? <laughs> in this episode. But so Sean is basically quoting John Hughes movies the whole time. The whole time. He's making connections to Pretty in Pink and yes. Breakfast Club and 16 yep. Candles the whole time time in this episode and it's great and he has he's wearing a picture even when it doesn't make sense even when it doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah Juliet's getting it nobody else is getting right, it or giving him right, love for it right. and he is wearing a picture of Judd Nelson which I find to be <laughs> hysterical hysterical right yep. and he says it's sweet sweet nice <laughs> <laughs> But Gus is taking this whole thing very, very seriously. He's put it together. He was pep captain. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cheerleader, right? <laughs> a leader of men. A leader <laughs> of men. <laughs> it's really funny. Sean seems particularly absent from yes. most of his high school experience. <laughs> Well, you know what? Or, or was he just making believe? You know, I, you know. I he don't came, know. he came through later. Yeah. You know, but yeah. yeah, it was like, you know. So where's the gymnasium? Where yeah. is this? Where is that? It's yeah. like really? where's the cafeteria. Come on. Come on yeah, I, I don't know you how know much of that was uh, yeah. busting Gus's chops. Yeah, and, I know. Well, I think part of it was probably not wanting to buy into it too much. I guess because of abigail right so in this episode abigail shows up and she was an object of sean's affection when he was in high school and she finally agreed to go out with him and he stood her up at the pier yeah and we later find out is because he was afraid he, he had gotten the tickets to the carnival he had shown up he saw what she was wearing and he was able to recount it and everything but he couldn't go through with it and Part of this episode is him talking to Henry about, do you think he missed his moment? Right. You know, do you think there are moments in life that define you? And if you miss them, you know, does it change the course of your life? And Henry's like, yeah, (laughs) it does. But life is made up of tons of these moments and you're always getting the opportunity to make a new choice. Right. And I thought that and Henry's was, going through kind of the same thing. He is because Madeline is there, Sean's right. mom, and Sybil Shepherd. She's so good. I know she's really good at that. <laughs> she 
I, I love her in this role. She's not around a lot, but when she's there, she's awesome. Yeah. And Henry is like, he still loves her. Oh, yeah. And so he tries to find And he's his, fumbling oh over his words. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. He's trying to find Bada his bowl. footing with her. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and Sean witnesses a murder at this reunion, but nobody else sees it. And then the body goes missing. And everybody keeps saying to him, no body, no crime. Throughout the whole thing. And he's like, seriously, do you have that on a t-shirt around here somewhere? Or <laughs> yeah. a poster or something? Because Lassie says it to him. Gus yeah. says it to him. Jules says it to him. And right. even Abigail says it to him. So <laughs> exactly. everybody, everybody's doing it. And he, he's getting really annoyed by that. But they can't find the body. Yeah. They do find the body eventually. And it's hilarious. But <laughs> first of all, did you see the pineapples? All over. There's so many pineapples so in this many episode. Pineapples. I know. Not only were there pineapples in Henry's kitchen, mm -hmm. there were pineapples all over the table of this reunion. And mm -hmm. it was all over the place. So a bunch of pineapples in this. A bunch of pineapples. Even Lassie was eating a slice of pineapple. Mm -hmm. Sean's kind of confounded by who got murdered, right. then by whom, then where'd the body go? Yeah. Then how was it done and why was it done? Was there a murder weapon? Like, he has all of these questions, unless he's asking him, and he's like, I don't know. Uh, he's like, I don't know, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, finally, they do figure it out. It was the high school quarterback and prom queen. Right. Who currently are basically in the same roles that they were way back, way back when. when. And, and they married. And we're they're married. married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a third in their love triangle in high school, and he happens to be the one who got killed because he took the fall for the quarterback guy way back when for a drunk driving accident. So right. that ruined his life, and now he's going to go on to go for state assemblyman or something. And this guy can't take this anymore because his life no. has been ruined. So right. they kill him to shut him up and they hide him in the school mascot costume <laughs> in the girl's locker room. That was pretty good, though. It was. It was really creative. <laughs> yes. Finally, during the reveal of the whole thing, after Gus's pep rally video. <laughs> yeah. I know. With 13. It was terrible. Oh, it was so bad. It was terrible. And he was so proud of it, too. <laughs> yeah. Sean does the reveal on stage after they crown the right. reunion king and queen. Lassie says to him, please tell me you have a body. Because this whole time, there's been no, no body. body. Right. And he's like, it's the furry saber cat backstage. He's like, great. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good because, you know, Lassie shows up at this reunion because he's on a date, date. And it's like, oh my god. And then he winds up arresting her. And he's like, this is the best date I've had in ages. <laughs> she was so obnoxious and she's so mean to him, you know? He was. And I so like mean. that Sean said, congratulations, you win the award for bitchiest banana. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But um, Sean does a really nice thing at the end because yes. this whole time at the reunion, people are disappointed by what Gus does for a living as a pharmaceutical salesman because he was voted like most likely to succeed and everybody yeah. expected greatness from him and he feels that like he hasn't lived up to his potential. So right. at the end, Sean does a nice kind of kudos to Gus and yes. says he's been his best friend since they were five and he's yeah. awesome and all that. Yeah. It was really sweet. It was really sweet. Yeah. 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 As a matter of fact, then they uh, go to Sean's parents. Mm -hmm. And and you could see how proud they were of him. So yeah, it was yeah. very touching. It was it very was. touching. It was. I, I really like that. I gotta tell you, I was getting annoyed at Sean in the beginning when he was like, "Well, where's this? Where's that? I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know." And he was just like, you know, it's like, "Come on, you know, you're smarter than that. I know you're smarter than that." But mm -hmm. then he kind of redeemed himself in this at towards the end. You know, when he started putting things together, it's like, "Yeah, Sean, here you. There's the Sean I know." Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. The other yeah. thing is, this is one of those episodes that I was hoping that him and Juliet would get together finally, you know, and it mm. just never happened in this one either. No, and she showed up in her. She was adorable. She had this pink dress on that everybody kept calling a prom dress, but right. she insisted it wasn't a prom dress. It was the dress that she was supposed to wear to her reunion that she couldn't go to. Right. You know, the thing about 
this little small love triangle between he and Julia and Abigail is mm -hmm. that Abigail is kind of perfect for Sean because she buys right into his silliness. Like she right. didn't miss a beat when, you know, yes, he comes he up to her quoting. with the Judd Nelson thing right. and whatever. Right. But then also Juliet was the only one to get a lot of the Breakfast Club jokes and references and stuff. So you can see how they're perfect too. And she's sure. backing him on yeah. the murder thing, even though there's no body, she's all in to help him. So yeah. it's a really interesting episode with those to kind of showing why they'd both be really good for him yeah you know but i like the end when gus is doing the breakfast club thing he's mm -hmm. talking about like we understand and they wind uh, up yes. charging the school for solving yeah. the murder right. Right. <laughs> even though they were withholding their deposit it's like oh you're gonna withhold 1500 hundred dollar deposit that's fine here's a bill for three thousand right. dollars for our services that was perfect and they did the breakfast club ending with Sean being Joe Nelson and throwing his arm up in the air in a victory. So it was, it was really cute. Yeah. yeah. So since Q is not in a Greek language, I thought to do some quotes from some Greek philosophers. Awesome. All right. The law is reason free from passion. Does anyone know who spoke those immortal words? Aristotle. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. Oh. <laughs> that, was, that was from Legally Blonde. So uh, my favorite is Aristotle, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I'll uh, give you a couple more from him. No great mind has ever existed without a touch of madness. I agree with that. Patience is bitter, but its fruit is sweet. Mm -hmm. Quality is not an act. It is a habit. Mm-hmm. Man, when perfected, is the best of animals, but when separated from law and justice, he is the worst of all. Yeah, I agree. You will never do anything in this world without courage. It is the greatest quality of the mind next to honor. Wow, that's really good. I actually have a little saying that, that Richard Branson said um, okay. that kind of ties into that. He said, the brave might not live forever, but the cautious do not live at all. That's awesome. Uh, so I thought those two go together yeah. really well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Nature does nothing uselessly. That's true. There is yeah. no waste. Nope. Mm -mm. And then the last one I have for today is well begun is half done. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, right? Yeah, that, I think Mary Poppins said that too. Oh, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a couple from Plato. At a touch of love, everyone becomes a poet. Wise men speak because they have something to say. Fools because they have to say something. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty well-known one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. One of the penalties for refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by your inferiors. Yikes. I've heard that one before. Okay, I'm going to move on to Socrates. The only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. Mm -hmm. The way to gain a good reputation is to endeavor to be what you desire to appear. I've heard different things like... Um, you have to embody that which you wish yes, to. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Worthless people live only to eat and drink. People of worth eat and drink only to live that is a big deal and you know that's that's also indicative of the the way society is using food to fulfill a need yes rather than just for the nourishment that that's it's the mindset to provide. Exactly. that's the mindset that you have to get in in order to lose weight you gotta Absolutely. Yeah, yeah okay so i'm up to hippocrates mm. It is more important to know what sort of person has a disease than to know what sort of disease a person has. Wow. Let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Mm -hmm. Heard that so many times. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if I can get this uh, name out. Antithenes. Pay attention to your enemies, for they are the first to discover your mistakes. Yes. 
Euripides, 10 soldiers wisely led will beat a hundred without a head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why the brave 300. Yeah. You yeah. know? And Sophocles, success is dependent on effort. And there's another good one from him. Wisdom outweighs any wealth. And I'm going to end with a proverb. The tongue has no bones, but bones it crushes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of these are excellent, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why they have stood the test of time. And you know? some apply to this day. It's, a lot of I them would say, do. I would say almost all of them apply to this Absolutely. day, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I always found that saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Right. That's wrong. Yeah. That is yeah. so wrong. And yeah. I don't know why we ever started teaching that. Yeah. Because words... Are kindergarten crushing really. yeah but um these people spent their lives thinking yes yes you're right and most people don't no anymore no doing people just do and don't think they don't think yeah and um interestingly in that new knives out movie glass onion mm -hmm. benoit said something about that he said you know speaking truth is different than speaking without thought because one of the girls was like, oh, I speak my truth. I speak because she just spoke anything that come, came to her mind. She just threw it out there. And it's like, that's not speaking truth. I think a lot of people mistake that. That's just that. saying something and that's a fool. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's one of these. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. think it's something we've lost and it's something that these Greek philosophers really gave to the world. And it was an example by which we were supposed to follow. And I think it's fallen off in this greedy give me society Environment. yeah yeah they really were thinking about the betterment of humanity and mm -hmm. and how to live a moral life right and i think we've gotten away from that somewhat i think so too yeah so that's some quotes that's yeah. awesome that is yeah. definitely something from this culture that i can get behind yeah So before we go, how'd you do at bowling? I had a really good week this week. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I rolled a 179, a 183, and a 172. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty good, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah. And we still lost two out of three of our games. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. The other team was just, they bowled out of their minds. They actually got the handicap record for the season bowling against us. I swear I should have your welcome cards made. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode remember to tell your friends and follow us on facebook at sense and nonsense a to z all one word and wherever you're listening please like our episodes and if you're listening on youtube subscribe to our channel and be sure to hit the notification bell ding, to get notified of each episode as it becomes available we appreciate you listening with that we're out of here thank you very much we'll see you next week